this video is about Soft Start and uh, Soft Start RV in particular because that's the name of the company that sold me mine. Um, after my experiment with the portable air conditioner ran its course, I found myself with a decision to make. Uh, basically, I was down to two options. Uh, one was hire an electrician, have him come out, put in a 30-amp circuit and plug um, that would be accessible uh, to put one in outside in our garage so I could plug um, the power cord from the casita into it. And uh, the other option was get a soft start unit. Um, and I didn't even know who the companies were. I knew there was, I thought there was one called Micro Air. And when I um, did a search, um, I found Micro Air and I found Soft Start RV. I think, I think I started by watching some YouTube videos and, um, both of them, they seem essentially the same. Um, the problem with microware for me, and they're about the same price, about three hundred. Problem with microware was it was gonna it was um, three week delivery wait, and soft start uh, was four days, um, is what it ended up being. I think I ordered it on a Sunday night, and I had it Thursday. <coughs> And I believe I paid like an extra 10 bucks for second day air. Um, but anyway, it took, I, I got it Thursday and I wasn't going to mess with it till the weekend anyway. So this, this would have been the weekend after, um, my portable air conditioner, um, fiasco, um, and I was doing all this so I could run my AC off of 20 amp regular wall plug. Um, uh, my other option, which I have, was to run it off the Honda 2200 generator, and, and that works fine. What you find out, though, when you get a soft start unit, um, is that the... the you know, the thing about air conditioners is that, um, hard, hard start that they all do home air conditioners do it. You know, uh, everybody's heard them RV, um, air conditioners definitely do it. If you're ever outside an RV in particular, um, you can hear them kick on, uh, to run their cycle and, um, that's where, you know, I, I, I'm not an electrician. I don't know all the terminology, terminology, but basically it's power surge. I think, um, extra power is required for that initial and every subsequent startup, um, when the compressor kicks on and, it's loud, it's impactful noise wise. Um, so I, I, I started looking in those soft start units as I was calling it soft start generically. Um, and it turned out the company I got it from was called soft start RV. They've got another company name, but I don't know what it is. And, um, so it arrived here. That was the way I was going to go. I didn't like, I didn't like the electrician scenario for a variety of reasons, but, um, the one that was enough of a reason was just having to call a guy, have him come out, meet him, you know, discuss all this and, um, make decisions about it. And, uh, I just didn't want to do all that. So, 
and I had soft start in my mind all along, even when I was doing the portable air conditioner thing. But it, it was always in my mind with the assumption that I would be getting someone else to install it, somebody qualified. Um, and maybe I would help them, but chances are it would be somebody qualified enough that they wouldn't want my help. Um, so I, 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 it came Thursday and a couple of days later on Saturday afternoon, it was a rare mild, uh, day here in Texas. Um, I, it was about 90 that afternoon, kind of balmy, uh, cause it was cloudy. I don't, don't recall rain threatening that it wasn't that day. But anyway, it was a mild day, so I didn't have the stress of 100 degree heat to deal with. So it didn't didn't even matter that I was doing it in, in the afternoon. Um, I had some challenges, but not with the soft start unit. The bigger initial challenge was figuring out, manipulating two ladders, one a folding um, construction site style ladder, a Wagner six footer. They're lightweight, easy to move around, but that wasn't going to get me on top of even a casita. Um, I had to get one of my other ladders, one of the kinds that you can fold up and configure how you want. But if you want to climb up a wall, um, you've got to unfold it basic. In my case, it had to go up, up like a galley ladder, um, where it's just running, you know, up, you lean it up against the surface you're going to climb to, in this case, this trailer. And so, and then I put the other ladder kind of next to it so that when I came down, I would have two footholds. Um, cause being a fiberglass trailer, a casita, and being and having all rounded edges and curves, um, it's slippery. And, um, I'm not in my 20s anymore. So, um, I, I did that. And, and then it gets a little worse after you get up on top because there's a, there's a raised portion to this, which you can see inside the casita, uh, the ceiling that runs down the aisle in the center where the AC is mounted to. But it, what that equates to is a raised portion of roof on the outside. Um, so you have this domish looking egg shape kind of thing. And then running along the center line of um, about half the length or more um, is this rigid rise, not rigid, but well, it is rigid, but um, more squared off shape um, about uh, eight or 10 inches high, probably. And that's where the AC unit sits on top of that ris riser, I'll call it. Um, close to the back of the trailer, a couple feet from the back is the back of the AC. And so you have to take the cover off. I did that, no problem. I noticed there were these round like stud fittings embedded in some kind of surface that had bolt um, threads through them and that's how the cover attached that's all I noticed about it um, quarter inch I think um, bolts with a f number three Phillips heading I believe um, head fitting and a big washer. I took those four things off. The back ones were hard to get to and sitting on that riser is not fun. It's not the kind of thing where every second you're thinking, God, I got to get out of this position. Um, but it's the kind of thing after about 10 or 15 minutes, um, straddling that thing, 
um, is you do, it's almost like claustrophobia. It's like, I got to get up now. Um, and the only thing that would m motivate me to stay under those conditions is if I just had one more wire to hook up or one more bolt to put in, you know, I'd push on and get it done. As it ended up, I had to go up there and down about four times, I think. The install of the actual soft start unit, um, which came in this box, um, was um, was pretty simple and, and didn't take much time. Uh, they said, you know, I don't know, on the YouTube videos, people said 40 minutes, 45, something like that. Um, I remember seeing one in particular where a guy had a Coleman Mach 8 like this camper has, but his was an older one. And believe me, um, just from what my little experience with this, um, air conditioners are laid out differently if they're made in different years. Um, and even with that one year, um, they can make air conditioners of the same size that are just wired in a different configuration. Something's different about it. And that was the cool thing about soft start RV. They do have, they boast about it in their right. They do have great customer support. Um, what I can't recall is how much information I had to give them about my air conditioner. Um, before to order it i you know in hindsight i think it was none uh, was, uh you get a this box um that's probably eight inches long um it's a full two pounds flat-sided um and it has five wires coming out of one end i believe it was one end um and that's what you are going to be dealing with. And then on the back of it, they had this big pad about two and a half by six inches, probably, um, of 3M. It was a 3M adhesive foam strip. And uh, they also had screw holes, eye holes that screw eyes um and they provide loose screws and stuff if you want to attach it into sheet metal or something up on the air conditioner housing yeah, under the cover. It's all hidden. And so the cool thing was I got it. And part of the support is that you get on your their site, which you know, can be challenging for me stuff like this it's not my first go-to thing uh, but in this case i wanted to follow everything exactly i'm a guy that often doesn't read instructions but this is kind of real borderline for being out of my league completely so uh being I, I was working with electricity and a new air conditioner a new camper and all that i had enough at stake that i wanted to be um, diligent about, um, doing it the way it was supposed to be done. Uh, so they, um, I get on the website and I mean, if you're going to get to this point as, as, that I was at, you're going to need to already have your soft start unit because when it comes, you're c pretty much committed. Um, that I'm sure they have some kind of return policy, but I was never going to do that. It was either going to work or it wasn't. And, um, but anyway, I got on there after I had the unit, it tells you to go up, take the cover off your AC and look for some numbers on the, um, um, electrical connector box i believe it was and <clears throat> they even described you know where to find them and uh, the numbers and what what it should look like <clears throat> and i i did that uh, so that was one trip i had to make up uh 
to the roof. They really nothing was done except removing the cover, but that I considered to be the start of my install. Um, took a picture uh, of the number and everything. Came down, got back on their site, looked it up. Um, I already knew I had a Coleman Mach 8. I knew it was new, but um, it does, none of that matters until you get that number off the electrical box. And mine was a uh, Coleman 19764, um, or 1976-764. Um, and then they... This particular schematic shows up, looked like mumbo jumbo to me, but when I compared it to what was on the roof, it was right. And I mean, it was dead right. There was one, um, maybe in there where they said, you know, if yours has this, do this. If yours has that, do that. And mine was one of the options. And it was this little connector called a PTCR, I believe. Um, I don't know what the hell it does, but it was, um, has a female and a male end on it. Um, I think this male end was on a post on the circuit board and it was kind of delicate to pull this off. I pushed my fingers down on that circuit board cause it was delicate enough to rip the whole board out of there, crack it in half. Um, it was that hard to get this thing off, but. It wasn't difficult, it was just that it's a, it's a fragile area. But it did pop off as it's supposed to, and as you can see, it's not on my roof anymore because I don't need it. Um, I need to end this video at 17 minutes. I'll pick it right back up.